my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet I'm Shannon and today I have another paranormal type video to share with you guys today we're going to be talking about the Empress Hotel located in Victoria British Columbia there's just something about this time of year where it's summer and people are going on vacations that makes me think about all of the haunted hotels I've heard about in the past because I know this is the third or fourth I've talked about on my channel since I started this series um, there's just something too creepy about hotels, even the nicest hotel, you know, a hotel that has no rumors surrounding it of ghost sightings. It's just still a little creepy, you know, especially at night when you're walking down those hallways. There's usually not many windows in those hallways and it's so quiet. You can almost hear your own heartbeat. It's so quiet. And then the walls and the carpet just especially when it's like a long corridor and you're walking and the walls are the same and the carpet's the same and it can get a little disorienting and there's just something creepy about it so I guess that's why you know we're always drawn to those sort of haunted hotel stories Stephen King especially he's got you know two films have been adapted from his hotel stories The Shining of course and then 1408 1408 is one of my all-time favorite Stephen King adaptations um, and the story the short story it's based on is so good too but anyway we are not here to talk about that I'm getting off on a major tangent already and we're only like a minute into this video so let's now just get right into the Empress Hotel so located in downtown Victoria, Victoria is a beautiful, beautiful part of the country. BC in general is, but Victoria is a beautiful city. The Empress Hotel is located um, downtown facing the Inner Harbor. And it was opened on January 20th, 1908. The hotel has beautiful steeped roofs, um, gables, just the architecture is so beautiful on it. And it was designed by a man named Francis Rattenbury. Uh, put a pin in that, we're gonna come back to him later. But um, after the hotel opened, it was so grand and so fabulous that it immediately became a destination spot for kings, queens, movie stars, you name it. They all found their way to the Empress Hotel. Legend has it that the famous Empress Hotel is also very haunted and there have been many different reports of many different types of ghosts but today we're going to talk about four I believe that are most commonly reported. So the first ghost is that of a maid. She is reportedly always seen only on the sixth floor of the hotel uh, many many years after her passing which took place at the hotel. Her name was Lizzie McGrath and in 1909 she was up on the sixth floor cleaning and she went to take a step out onto the fire escape um, to I guess maybe clean the windows outside whatever it was she had in mind she needed to go out onto the fire escape but she either hadn't been alerted or she had forgotten that the hotel was having some construction done and the fire escapes on that floor had been removed and so instead of stepping out onto a safe fire escape like she thought she would she ended up falling to her death guests have also often reported seeing the ghost of a little girl in one of the rooms although from the research I've done I couldn't tell exactly which room it is but um, there's also this one kind of makes me sad there's uh, many reports quite a few that I saw people report that in the middle of the night they hear a knock on their room door and they get up and they go to answer the door and um, when they do there's an old woman there and she's wearing her pajamas and she seems a little disoriented and lost and so she she communicates that she needs help finding her room and so the guest whoever answers the door they leave with her to go help her find her room and as they're doing this the old lady is kind of guiding them towards the elevators and then once they get to the elevators they turn and look and she's vanished so rumor has kind of been that this is the ghost of an old woman who when she stayed at the hotel she died just of natural causes in her room and um 
years after that, the room that she was staying in was one of many rooms that got sort of torn down to make way for more elevators in the hotel. And, and that's kind of thought to be the reason that she's leading you to the elevators because that's where her room used to be. And so she's very confused why she can't find her room anymore. <laughs> Makes me sad. And speaking of renovations, as this has seemed to have been a theme for a few of the ghosts, um, back in the 60s, there was um, a construction crew on site to do, once again, some renovations. And one of the men who was working in the top floor of the West Tower, he reported that he could see, um, or had seen on multiple occasions, a shadowy figure hanging from the ceiling. And it freaked him out. You know, the first couple of times, maybe he didn't say anything, but then eventually he had no choice. He had to say something to somebody, see if anybody else had seen it. And uh, once he reported it, it was told to him that, that the year before, a worker had been working in the spot where this man had reported seeing his vision and had ended his own life. And that seemed to be what the construction worker was seeing. But perhaps the most famous sighting that is reported is that of a thin man with a mustache who is walking the halls of the hotel. And that apparition is said to be none other than the hotel's designer himself, architect Francis Rattenbury. Now, I was doing some research about Mr. Rattenbury, and he had quite an interesting life. And though reports have him haunting the hotel, he actually didn't die there, but it would make sense that his spirit would find its way back. So I was looking around on the internet and I've screenshot a little bit about Francis just to give you some of his history. I'm going to read it to you. I'll link down below the website where I screenshot all this info from so you can go and check it out at the source. But I just wanted to read to you briefly the story of Francis Rattenbury. So Francis Frank Rattenbury arrived in Victoria in his early 20s and set about creating a name for himself in Victoria society. Shortly after the legislative building, one of Rattenbury's first of many architectural triumphs that still stands on Victoria's Harbor was opened in 1898. Frank married Florence Nunn. <laughs> this is going to play a part in his death. The daughter of a retired British Indian Army officer turned prospector, many of Victoria's young maidens gossiped behind closed doors at the time of their engagement, wondering what this successful, handsome, and most eligible of Victoria bachelors could possibly see in the very, very plain Florence. Nevertheless, Rattenbury did marry Florence in a June wedding and they went to live in a beautiful beachfront home in Oak Bay. They subsequently had two children, Frank Jr. and Mary. Rattenbury's professional success made him the darling of Victoria society. However, trouble was brewing behind closed doors in his Oak Bay home. On a personal basis, Rats was often thought of by his peers as an ill-tempered Ill and mean man who was extremely frugal with his money. This side of his personality quickly reared its ugly head after he got married. Flory and Frank soon discovered that they were ill-suited to each other. In the years following, they grew to dislike each other intensely. Despite this sad state of affairs, they continued to live together. Rats, now drinking excessively, took up residence in separate quarters of their home. It's said that in later years, he refused to even speak to his wife directly, and only communicated with her through their daughter. One evening in 1923, at a dinner in his honor at the Empress, Rattenbury, now in his mid-fifties, met Alma Parkenham, still in her early twenties, already once widowed and once divorced. Alma was beautiful, accomplished pianist, composer, and musician, visiting Victoria from Vancouver to give a piano recital. Frank was instantly smitten by this vibrant, daring, young, and for the times loose flapper woman, who reportedly drank and smoked openly in public. <laughs> Within days, the pair were embroiled in a publicly open, torrid love affair, much to the dismay of the elite in Victoria society. The tongues of Victoria's upper crust wagged furiously when Frank and Alma began appearing at social functions together, apparently oblivious to public opinion and with scant regard for Florence's feelings or reputation. The titillating rumors circulated the town. 
about Alma in particular were numerous, harsh, and cruel. Within a short period of time, Frank approached Flory and asked for a divorce. Flory refused. Frank, not about to give up his mistress, began entertaining Alma nightly at the family home in Oak Bay. No doubt hoping that Flory would quickly change her mind, but she did not. Frank, now becoming desperate to be rid of Flory, upped the stakes. He began to harangue with her decidedly cruel behavior. He invited Alma for overnight stays in their home. Flory was forced to listen to their squealing lovemaking accompanied by loud drinking and drug use. So by the time Frank decided that this was not getting him <laughs> the desired outcome that he wanted, try as he may to run his wife off, she wasn't having it. So he decided to move out. His parting gift was to have the heat and lights turned off in their home. Tired, heartbroken, and deeply embarrassed by the antics of her estranged husband, Flory finally gave up, and she agreed to his request for divorce. Frank and Alma married in 1925 as soon as the divorce was final. His reputation in ruins. Through the scandalous affair with Alma, he was publicly shunned by his former clients and colleagues. With commissions no longer forthcoming, his finances suffered greatly. The couple became social prize. Nobody wanted anything to do with them. They were no longer invited for dinners, parties, or the theater, shunned on the streets of Victoria by the social elite. People no longer even spoke to them. In 1929, they decided to move to England for a fresh start. He and Alma, along with their infant son, left Victoria for good. The move to England did not bring the hoped for betterment of their finances and social standing. Financially strapped, Frank's relationship with Alma, who loved to spend money, began disintegrating. Bitter and despondent, he quickly turned into an impotent alcoholic old man who sat hour after hour alone in a dimly lit room. Alma, on the other hand, still young and enjoying some success as a composer and musician, craved excitement with her usual carelessness. This 38-year-old woman began an affair with George Percy Stoner, an 18-year-old high school dropout that Francis had hired as his chauffeur. <laughs> a scandalous. One night in 1935, while sitting in the drawing room in a drunken stupor, 67-year-old Rattenbury was murdered from behind. Several blows to his head with a carpenter's mallet quickly rendered him unconscious. He remained unconscious for a number of hours and then died in hospital. Alma and Stoner immediately came under suspicion and murder charges against the two for the gruesome crime quickly followed. And then, so after that, there was a very, like, sensational, just over-the-top trial for the murders. The trial lasted, in the end, five days. As a witness, Alma described how, trying to bring her husband around, she first accidentally trod on his false teeth and then tried to put them back into his mouth so that he could speak to her. Mrs. Rattenberry said, when her lover got into bed that night and told her what he had done, my first thought was to protect him. In the end, Alma was acquitted of the charges. Stoner, on the other hand, was convicted and sentenced to death. The article goes on to say, was Alma distraught at the thought of losing her lover to the hangman? Had she committed the murder herself and was now riddled with guilt? With her reputation permanently destroyed and her and her faced with the prospect of living the rest of her life in disgrace. Was she consumed with guilt and shame? We'll never know. She committed suicide four days later. She stabbed herself repeatedly in the heart, fell into a river, and drowned. Like, talk about dramatic. <laughs> this whole story just reads like a movie. Her body was discovered within hours. There was no note. The headlines in the London newspapers were said. The headlines in the London newspapers were said to be the most dramatic and sensational since the sinking of the Titanic. So yes, while he died far away from home in the Empress Hotel in Victoria, it is said that he's he's still there. He is still there, just dragging along the hallways, going up and down the staircases just forever roaming in his greatest accomplishment, you know, his crowning glory, this hotel, so beautiful as it was, and, uh, or as it is, and yeah, that's, that's the story of the Empress Hotel. I find that so interesting, and like, what a story to go along with it. The, the story of 
Francis Rattenberry. Wow. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm a day late with my upload, but I mean, that's all you can do, right? Life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, but I will see you guys tomorrow, hopefully, with uh, another book talk video. Bye, guys.